Henry III was King of England from 1216 to 1272, 56 years in total, running from when he was just nine years old to when he was 65. He's the longest serving king of the medieval era. His tenure was only beaten by George III, whose reign started 544 years after Henry's coronation. Henry was the fourth of 14 Plantagenet kings who ruled England. He's perhaps best known for being forced to set up an early version of Parliament and building the Westminster Abbey we know today. He's here in our Kings and Queens timeline. When he was born in 1207, his father, John, was eight years into his own reign as King of England. Thanks to his poor leadership, John was forced to sign Magna Carta, an attempt to severely limit the king's power. John tried to overturn it, causing the barons to declare war on him, but in the midst of this, in 1216, the king died and nine-year-old Henry was crowned. For the first part of his reign, Henry III was effectively controlled by English noblemen. When he came of age, though, he was keen to prove his worth as a strong king, so invaded France in 1230, hoping to reclaim the Angevin lands his father had lost. The plan failed, and though he was defeated at the hands of the French, he was still heavily influenced by them and modelled his own royal court on that of the French monarchies. He favoured French courtiers and married Eleanor of Provence. He even decided that Westminster Abbey would be built in an Anglo-French Gothic style. Henry's love of all things French isn't perhaps surprising, given his mother, Isabella of Angoulême, was a French noblewoman. Speaking of Isabella, when King John died, rather than retiring and putting her feet up, she went on to marry Hugh X, the Count of La Marche, and have another nine children. And Henry's generosity to his French relatives would be part of his undoing. His half-siblings, the Lusagnons, were welcomed into his court and rewarded with generous gifts and land. On top of that, his wife's own Savoyard relatives came across to England to benefit from his largesse too. This obsession with all things French was breeding resentment among the English barons, who were convinced the king was plotting to go to war against them and reclaim the powers his father had lost under Magna Carta. Though the country sailed close to civil war because of this, the kingdom still remained at peace. Peace, that is, for most of Henry's subjects. For any Jews living in England at the time, not so much. As his reign progressed, Henry's policies towards Jewish people became increasingly harsh. Following the lead of the Catholic Church at the time, he imprisoned Jewish leaders, levied fines, and in 1253 passed the Statute of Jewry, outlawing the building of synagogues and forcing Jews to wear identity badges, enabling the public to persecute them more easily. Henry's reign during this time can be characterised as one filled with dreams of glory that never panned out. He wanted to reclaim lost lands in France, and he even planned to join a crusade to Jerusalem, but none of this ever got got off the ground, and this was mainly due to his relative poverty. The crown under Henry was broke. Thanks to Magna Carta, collecting taxes was harder than it had ever been, and any money he did raise was quickly and poorly spent, such as the time in the 1250s when he spent money he didn't have on a failed attempt to make his son the King of Sicily. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. Each uptick helps us make new episodes. Please also subscribe if you haven't done so already. By the 1250s, relations between the king and the English barons were at a new low, seething at the increased power of the king's French relatives and his erratic decisions. The barons lined up behind a charismatic new leader, the powerful nobleman Simon de Montfort, a Frenchman, but an anglicised one. In 1258, the barons and de Montfort confronted the king with their complaints. The king backed down and signed the Provisions of Oxford, which more or less put power in the hands of an elected council, leaving Henry as king in name only. As far as Henry III was concerned, though, things were far from settled. Like his father, King John before him, he was determined to reverse these reforms. The barons were furious, and in 1264, civil war broke out, with the king on one side and de Montfort on the other. Disastrously, the king himself was captured at the Battle of Lewis and forced to submit to the barons' demands. To encourage him to keep his word, his son, the future formidable King Edward I, then Prince Edward, was handed over as a hostage. The king was defeated and nothing more than a figurehead in his own realm. De Montfort was effectively in charge, and representatives from each county were invited to come to Parliament and have a say on taxation. Crazy idea. But Henry's story doesn't quite end there. Amazingly, Prince Edward escaped from captivity, raised an army, and defeated and killed de Montfort the following year at the Battle of Evesham. De Montfort may have been defeated, but his ideas of a representative democracy would live on. In 1269, Henry III's magnificent Westminster Abbey was finally consecrated. Three years later, in 1272, the king died and was laid to rest there. He was succeeded by his powerful son, Edward, crowned King Edward I, and who we'll cover in the next video.